Good morning, everyone. Welcome to CCN. How's everybody doing this morning? Yay. Um, so we just wanted to welcome you this morning, say thank you for joining us, and what a wonderful day it is to be all here together and worshiping in the house of the Lord. Um, so at this time, we'd like to just take a moment to bow our heads and pray. Good morning, Jackie. How are you? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that you've given to us. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in your house and to be able to worship you freely today, God. We just thank you for all that you do and all that you're going to do. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his death on the cross. And we thank you for his blood that forgives us for our sins. We just ask all these things in His precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.
Alrighty. So the announcements that we have coming up are that we're going to be having a Father's Day breakfast at 9 a.m. It's going to be biscuits and gravy. So if you know some dads out there or some people who are like dads to you that you'd like to invite to come to church that morning, uh, please do have them join us for a 9 a.m. biscuits and gravy. And I'm not sure it does have a date on it. Is that next week? No, it's oh, Father's Day. The Father's Day weekend. Okay. Well, they put a date on it. So. Yeah, the 20th. So. Father's Day is still right where it was. <laughs> um, and there's also our parking lot fund is still in swing so if you'd like to donate a little bit of extra scratch to help us redo the parking lot um, there are going to be some envelopes in the back that you can find back there uh, to help us uh, in assistance with getting our parking lot repaved and then uh, don't, forget, don't forget to grab your bulletins this week uh, to check our weekly schedule so you know any of our upcoming events and our bible studies or if things got changed or moved last minute uh, and at this time, we just like you guys to stand up, uh, find somebody, and say good morning to them. We'd like to start with it, but we'd uh, do a hymn right now, one you may know or may not.
So how was your week? Seems weird to have nothing said between each song. But uh, let me read a scripture for you guys. I have one pulled up here. I've been reading in Corinthians. And so, yeah, I've been reading Corinthians. If I can get to it. Hang on a sec, guys. If I knew how to use my phone. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think I got it. One more. Yeah, here we go. So, I've been reading in Corinthians, and it talks about how the wisdom of God is far surpassing the wisdom of man. And if I pulled up the right scripture here, I'll read you that. Honestly, I will. Yeah. So there's nothing different from a pause between songs and a pause between trying to find scripture. But uh, let me read you this. No, we declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God has disdained for our glory before time began. In God's word, he says that uh, our that his wisdom far be asked, far the things God doesn't know far not that God doesn't know anything, but God's wisdom is surpasses all that man knows. Today I was listening to the news this morning and they discovered a new metal. I mean, this is just an interesting fact. They discover a new metal that can, that can sustain 2300 degrees without changing its molecular structure. That's an amazing thing. It's never happened before. But that's nothing compared to what God knows. We haven't even, we haven't even touched the surface of what God knows. He put the sun out there that's been burning for all this time. He created each one of us. And the amazing thing is He created us and then loves us so much that He gave His only Son for our lives.
I would like to introduce our guest speaker. You all know the one and only Billy. Pastor Billy Murray. I've known this guy for a very long time. And uh, never regretted one day of it. here it's always good to um, have the worship team uh, worship for, and to get us into a state of worship this morning so uh, okay you guys stand up if you're on the worship team okay we're sitting you, we, we can do this we can have fun you're just gonna while you're sitting put your hands up like this and go we're not worthy we're not worthy <laughs> yeah really no I mean seriously you guys this is there are people at other churches that get paid to do what you guys just did. So we appreciate your ministry and, and service and everything. So that's great. Pastor Curtis and Steph are over doing the doing the baby dedication or baptism or yeah. dedication. Dead baby dedication. That's great. So it's a privilege whenever he gives me a call and says, Hey, can you fill out? I'm like, okay. I mean I respond like back like within seconds, you know. <laughs> as fast as I find the message there. So uh, we're going to, um, we've been doing a series on prayer. Just holler out to me something that you got from this series of prayer over the last couple weeks. What's something that, that you learned new or it brought fresh to your mind that you hadn't thought of before? The last couple of weeks, you've been doing the prayer series. Yes, yes ma'am. God is my father. God is your father. That's great. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Okay, our father, part of, we're part of the family. Excellent. Anyone else? Without ceasing. Pray, pray to pray without ceasing. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's my whole sermon, so I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> with with everything going on this week, um, I didn't get any direction, so it's nice to know what happened. I was here about a month ago, four or five weeks ago, and so. Uh, but anyone else? Something else that you just it's kind of, it's come to you over the last couple of weeks doing the prayer and series on sermons. Yes, ma'am. Pray specifically. Pray specifically. Okay. That's good. Anyone else? You can trust him. You can trust God. Okay. Yes, in the back. Nothing is too big to ask for. Nothing is too big to ask for. That's right. Good. Anyone else? Prayer and Thanksgiving? Okay. Another one? The answer's prayer. Answer's prayer? Sometimes not in our own time frame, right? <laughs> Be still and know that I'm not. I mean, sometimes it takes a while. Okay. Anyone else want to jump in on this? Yes, sir. Without ceasing. To pray without ceasing, okay? He's in the waiting. He's what? He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. That's good. This is all excellent. What's that? The peace you get from prayer. The peace you get from through prayer. From prayer. So even if you missed the last couple of weeks, we're all up to date. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> even I'm up to date. So today we're going to talk um, about prayer, but it really has it, it's not any one of those. So it was really kind of a cool. What better way to do this than uh, prayer is a two way communication. Prayer is a two-way communication. It's not just us repeating prayers over and over and over and over. There has to be a response that comes back. And we have to know what that response is and how to interpret it. So what better way to do that than to find someone from this church that loves to eat? Is there anyone else that loves to eat? You too. Okay, come on up here. Anyone else? Anyone else that likes to eat? All right, as you can tell here... I have a sourdough bread, and then I have like a whole wheat light 
because my wife buys all that diet stuff. <laughs> that I mean, it's so. I mean, you could throw it in the air and it would float to the ground. All right, just slowly. So there's two different kinds of bread to choose from. Would anyone else like to jump in on this? Okay, here you go. All right. So here's the deal. You don't like to eat, do you? I know eat. Yeah. I know <laughs> The last time we were at Olive Garden, instead of the lunch special, he got the big deal, right? Dinner special. Dinner special. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How many people are like that? You go for the big dinner special and not the lunch? Just one. Okay. I picked the right guy for the day. All right. So since you like to eat so much and you're such a generous person, we're going to let this guy go first. <laughs> Teaching you patience. Okay, so you get to pick one of those two breads. And you have to consume the whole thing while you're... No, I'm just kidding. So go ahead and take a bite. Here he goes. Turn and watch him chew. Okay, good. So you pick kind of a whole wheat, kind of a light... No, no, you got to keep it. Because he'll, he'll eat that too. <laughs> now your only flavor that you have left is sourdough. Do you... Oh, man. Okay. Were you kind of glad he picked that one? Yeah. Instead of the sourdough. Well, the sourdough is bigger, too. Yeah, it is. So the flavor and it's like volume, right? Oh, yeah. Well, let's go. Let's see it. Chew it. And let everybody see you chew it. No, look, look that way. Just keep your mouth closed so we don't see food. <laughs> if you forget anything else about this sermon, you're going to remember these two guys looking at you chewing up bread, okay? <laughs> Let's give you guys a hand as they go have a seat. Okay, you can have a seat. And you get to keep the rest of the bread. All right, you're welcome. Sorry I didn't have any peanut butter or something for you, but that'll be the next sermon. So, uh, all right. Here's the deal. Whenever you, food is so important for us. I mean, we have to eat. Um, anybody here a diabetic? Any diabetics in the house? All right. They got me on something now where I can't eat very much. and It doesn't taste good. Um, it's kind of good. I'm two pounds under my wedding weight, but on the other hand, I don't want to keep shrinking to nothing. <laughs> and they only said diabetes was about your weight. No, it's not. My levels are still all over the place. <laughs> I can eat the same thing three days in a row and it'll be different. They can't figure me out. I'm like a cockroach because a cockroach will adapt to whatever you're trying to kill it with. So you have to keep switching. Rid of bug, Walmart special. <laughs> Boric acid, you gotta keep moving down. Anybody ever live in Florida? That's what you have to do in Florida because they're, they're all over the place. Everybody's got them. So what happens is, the uh, we're gonna talk today specifically about and, and make reference to manna. Anybody know what manna is? The definition is gonna be up there in just in a second. Manna is a miraculous bread from heaven. It saved the Israelites from starvation. Here's what's funny. When they're out there in the desert, they're wandering for how many years? 40. 40 years. There's not a whole lot of grocery stores. There's not a Wally World to go to. Uh, can you imagine being in charge of that many people and now you have to feed them? So God comes up with this cool thing, manna and quail. Every morning they wake up, there's manna. Anybody ever remember the old uh, Keith Green? He had a song. He called it manicotti, manna bread. Remember, there's a song and he talks about manna and he refers it to all kinds of foods. So what happens is manna was provided by God every morning. Now you and I, we buy bread sometimes for a whole week or two weeks until it gets green and moldy and then you feed it to your mother-in-law. And <laughs> so what happens is it wasn't that way. There was no preservatives. It's kind of like unleavened bread. There wasn't anything in it. They put all kinds of stuff in that sourdough. That's why he's going to go now. <laughs> he left it just the right time. So what happens is, manna, the children of Israel, someone may have got really stingy and said, you know what? I don't want to get up at 6.30 in the morning and go pick up manna out there. I'll just go pick up 10 baskets of manna and then I'll have enough manna for the whole week. I'll be real productive. God will be glad that I saved my time and my steps. No, because by the next day, the manna was no good. God did that because he wanted the children of Israel to rely on his bread every day. And not get greedy. Some of us would group it up and then sell it to someone else. 
It doesn't say specifically in the Bible, but I think people went out and did pick up manna and went to and gave it to people that couldn't afford to get out and go get the manna. There's a kind of kindness that would have taken place. So manna is bread that God provided, and He provided every day. Here's what happens. When the children of Israel get right to the land of Canaan, the manna stops. Forty years it stops. Um, how did we plant that garden 40 years ago? How did we get fed? But the whole idea was God wanted the children of Israel to rely on Him every day for their daily bread. Did, um, when they settled there in Canaan, so here we go. Get your, get your daily bread. It's your daily direction. That's why it's important just to read part of a verse, some of a verse, whatever it takes. How many people every day you kind of try to at least get one verse in? One verse. I would rather someone get one verse and apply it than read a whole chapter or five chapters and nothing applies. I met a guy recently. He's a, he's a, he's a two years been a Christian. And he was asking me what kind of Bible that he should read. Because there's a lot of different translations. There's a lot of different flavors of bread. <laughs> there's sourdough. There's whole wheat. There's whatever. How many people out there who have your staunch King James original King James? How many people your King James New Version? How many NIVs? Nazarene International Version. You know, call it. How many people in the Living Bible? I'll pray for you. <laughs> Ask me afterwards, I'll tell you why. So what happens is this. There's different flavors of the Bible. But what's important is that you get your daily intake of whatever it is. This guy that I met, he's been two years a Christian. He doesn't own a Bible. He owns one of these. I'm stunned. What do you mean? He's never read a paperback Bible. But he knows as much as the Bible as people that touch the Bible. So we have other ways of getting the bread. How many people you like use your phone or you have a daily verse? I do. I have a verse that pops up every day. I can just boom on it and I'm good to go. You can do that while you're drinking your protein drink like we were talking about. Or you can do it while you're eating your breakfast. But just get a verse and apply that verse. It's, it's the daily bread that we're trying to get in our bodies. Matthew 6, 11 through 13, the short version in the NIV says this. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts and lead us not into temptation. Even in the New Testament, it's going back to daily. Daily, get your manna from God. Don't try to stockpile it up. It is good to memorize parts of the Bible because there's sometimes, I always say this, sometimes a, a situation will happen and this will tie into effective communication with what we have with God. As we pray to God, He speaks back to us through the Bible. So it's important that sometimes when He speaks back to us, it's a verse that we have memorized last week. Sometimes you read the verse and that verse hits you like today. We were talking to a lady earlier before the service, and she took her Bible. You can take your Bible, and you can just go like this and stop at any point, and there will be a truth right there, and it makes sense. I have never taken a, hard, a hardback. I'm going to call it the Bible a hardback. I've never taken a hardback Bible and gone like this anywhere in the Bible and stopped, and it didn't make sense. I've taken other religious doctrines from the Moonies, from the Mormons, and I've gone like this, and it makes no sense. Never has made sense. The Bible always makes sense. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit. That means it's to the point. Sometimes you, you memorize that verse, and then today something happens, and you'll go, Oh yeah, that verse was for me two days ago. Some days it's right now. Sometimes you read a verse, it makes no sense. God knows you need it two days from now. So you store, stockpile, warehouse. When I would go to a, up to Snowball, there's a ski lift at Agassiz. Anybody ever been to the top 11,700 feet? You could go there in the summer now and just ride it to the top and get in 50 degree weather <laughs> and maybe snowed on sometimes. I would see if I could ride that chairlift from the bottom to the top and just quote Bible verses to myself. Because I didn't want to scare the other people on the chair. <laughs> And uh, so what happened is I would see if I could make it 20 minutes 
Try that challenge once. Just sit, get by yourself and see if you can make it 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 minutes of just quote Bible verses just like that. And I'm really not a memorization kind of a person. I mean, like if you ask me the Ten Commandments, I'll give them to you in a random order, but I can't, I, I don't see the page. How many of you are like visual learners? You can, if you see the Ten Commandments, you can see it on a page somewhere. She is in the back. You got A's, didn't you, in school? As long as you tried. Okay. <laughs> and so, so what happens is, this verse says, give us our daily bread. So every day it's important for us to go to God and ask for daily bread, ask for nutrients, ask for what we need to, 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 to serve Him that day. Sometimes, when, sometimes in the morning when I get up, I go, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do today? What do I need to do? And He'll just pop stuff into my mind about what I need to do. So, and then before I go to bed at night, I sleep really well. My wife says, like, 10 seconds, I'm gone. Because you know what? I pray to God and I say, is there something I should have done today? And he'll tell me. Oh, you should have called someone to encourage him. You should have done this. You should have. And he'll give me direction. So every day, this isn't just for the sermon. This is every day a, a, a healthy Christian will constantly go to God for daily bread. And you have to do this. Ask God for what you should do today in his direction and his power. It's not on our power. It's not up to me to generate the power. It's not even the power for me to have to, to have to earn, to have to build up to where I like you. I have to love you, even though I may not like you. Tell the person beside you, I have to love you, even though I may not like you. Unless that's your wife. Okay, unless that's your wife. <laughs> Next week we'll do a series on divorce and <laughs> marriage counseling. <laughs> This is a cool diagram that I've used for years and years, and I found this one. It's not the exact one I use, but it kind of shows it. Here we are, that's me, I'm down there. And then up there we have God. And what happens is, we pray to God going up the right way. We pray to God this way, and then He speaks back to us through the Bible. He'll never tell you what to do that's not in the Bible. A lot of people are running around going, well, God told me to do this. No, he didn't. Where's in the Bible? See, you go through and, 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 and it's not just picking out little parts and verses. It's finding out what the true meaning is. That gentleman that had, that had never read a real Bible and wanted to go buy one, when I told him, I need to stay here to stay in the camera, don't I? Um, <laughs> I asked him, I said, when you read the Bible, is it like reading a newspaper? Do you want to like read a newspaper or do you want to study for a test? Think about that for a minute. When you read the Bible, are you reading it just as if it's you're reading Life magazine or Newsweek or whatever? Or are you studying for a test? That will determine which Bible and how deep you go. I have one Bible, it's about that big. It's the whole Bible, but it has all four translations of that verse side by side. When I was explaining that to him, he's like, wow, they, they have those? That's what he needed. Because he didn't want to just read a newspaper. He wanted to study for a test. So it didn't just like, well, I sat down, I read a chapter, I'm done. Again, better to read one verse and apply it. Take it as daily bread into our lives. And so what happens is, I think about this all the time, that when I pray to God, I'm praying for answers through the Bible. If I don't eat the bread, if I'm not looking at the Bible, how do I know, how do I have any idea what God is trying to give me direction and tell me to do? So, um, oh, are, you going, are you going to go get a microphone? Okay. Here's what happens. I was coming, um, when you come out of Phoenix, if you're on 89.9, it's a Christian station. When I got to the mountain coming up off the freeway, what's the mountain called? Signal Peak. Signal Peak. When I got on Signal Peak and I got to the top of it, the radio went, shh. I lost the station. This just happened, you guys, like 45 minutes ago. I thought, I'm going to listen to some static for a little while. 
When's the last time you just listened to some static? Never. Because you got to get to another station. So what I did was, I reached over on the radio and I pushed scan. And it goes to 91.9. I didn't know Coolidge had a Christian station. Not only did it go to 91.9, it said, you need to buy your car from Garrett Motors. <laughs> That just happened this morning. <laughs> Anybody else? Was anyone else listening to 91.9 on the way to church? Did you hear him say Garrett Motors, a commercial? Do you hear it all the time? All right. That sounds good. By the way, there's some cars out in the parking lot that need to be traded in. So go see, go, go see Jim tomorrow. Okay. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I was like, wow, that's pretty. No, listen, no one had planned that. I didn't plan that. I didn't know there was a Coolidge Christian radio station. God wanted that in this sermon. So if it applies to you, take it and eat it. All right? Sounds good. So um, I've got some help here. He's going to help me out. We have a weird piece of uh, item. That's the closest we could get. Okay, how's that? <laughs> okay. Ready? Is that show still on? Is Jeopardy still on? I, I just know the weird song. <laughs> so we have something over here. How many people have no idea what that is? Battery charger? No? Alarm clock? Yeah, but it's also a radio. People today don't know what a radio is. You ever pull someone in your car and you want to talk to a car beside you and you go like this? In a couple of years from now, they're going to go, that person's crazy. What are they doing? Because you got to go, like you're pushing a button, right? Some people have no idea what a radio is. Let's go to the next. Yeah, here's a slide. It's really pretty cool. Do you realize that right now, now don't let this freak you out, especially if you're ADD or something. Right now, there are radio frequencies. Every radio station that that radio can pick up is floating around us right now. Do you hear it? We don't hear it. Here's what happens. I want to make a correlation between getting your radio tuned in for your daily bread by the Bible you read and how you understand it. So here's what happens. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Good ally, Dawn is proud to support Can't Cancel Pride and those people making a difference in the lives of LGBTQ plus people from all walks of life. All right, let's try another station. Then you got to aspect of responsible gun ownership. I want it to be safe, legal, and free in my street. All right. Stop in the middle somewhere. As long as we don't get a little weenie weenie, we're okay. Okay, here come the radio stations. <laughs> Some people, when they pick up the Bible, that's all they hear. That's all they understand. I say, get to a flavor of the bread. Get to an NIV. If it takes a King James, go all the way back to King James. How many people are New American Standard? The American Standard are most correct to the original uh, Hebrew. So what happens is, find out a verse that, that hits with you. I sometimes, I sometimes like the New English Oxford. If you have a phone, you can pick like 50 different translations of the Bible. When you do pick out a Bible, if you, you, you want to find out the more theologians and the more people that help to make that translation as correct as possible. Does that make sense? Because like in the Living Bible, I, I sometimes read the Living Bible, but in the Living Bible, it says that when Jesus went to the garden, that he sweat drops of blood in the garden. That he didn't need to go to the cross because he already shed his blood. The Living Bible was, was a paraphrase. A paraphrase is one person giving their interpretation of that flavor of Bible. I want 50 scholars. I want 100 scholars that have tried to take that verse because if you read it in NIV and all the other translations, it says that while he was in the garden, he prayed and fervently he sweat like drops of blood. That one word can change 
what really takes place. So I try to get into like Bibles that are like, you know, have some depth to it. I don't want to just read a newspaper. I want to study for a test. And so the Bible is our radio to pick up God's response to our prayers. So here's the deal. How many people pray and God sometimes doesn't answer? That happens a lot of times. In fact, if it's a timing, should I apply for this job or not apply for this job? Go ahead and apply for the job. But whether you accept that job, pray. And sometimes, if God doesn't give you a specific answer back through the Bible, then go ahead and make the best choice and God's cool with it. Does that make sense? There's people like, well, I was sitting here waiting whether I should vacuum my house. And 40 years later, I'm on a TV show called Hoarders. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, let's give a hand, a little hand. Four claps. All right. Get your daily bread and daily direction. Now, here's what happens. Sometimes the direction, what worked yesterday, may not work today. That's why it's important every day to get daily bread, get a daily update to pray and then read the Bible and then get a daily update about. Because here's what happens. Moses was with those people, and they're getting manna, they're getting quail, but I'm thirsty. So he prays to God, and God says, go up and take your rod and hit this rock, and you'll get water. So guess what happens? Hits the rock, water comes out. The next day, Moses didn't go do his daily bread. He didn't go ask God what he should do. Moses thought, well, I hit that yesterday. I got water. I'll go back today. God told him on day two to speak to the rock. But he thought he would do what, what he thought would already work. See, sometimes God, God gives us different direction for each day in what we should do. That's why daily bread is so important. When Moses hit the rock, no water came out the second day. If he would have just said and spoke to it, God would have honored that. It's God, God honoring our obedience. So what direction God gives you may change from day to day, but the important part is to get your daily bread, your daily direction. It's just really good communication. There's a really cool book. This is, uh, oh, here it is. <laughs> I got this book from someone in the church whose initials are JG. You can figure it out. <laughs> it's really a cool book. You can tell it's getting really pretty abused. Uh, Prayer, the Mightiest Force in the World, Thoughts for an Atomic Age. This, this book was written in the 1945, 19, in the 40s, 45. This book was put together. There's great truth still in this. And there's a the, there's a quote, this book was written by Frank C. Lombach. And there's a quote that we're going to put up here. It'll be two screens. That really kind of ties in. People will catch the Christ in us. The greatest way to help Christ conquer the world is to saturate our own minds with him. How do you saturate your mind? You pray to him and you read the Bible. That's saturating your mind. If we keep him in our thoughts persistently all day, every day, we shall radio the thoughts of Christ to the minds of countless millions all over the world. Prayer, the mightiest force. So what happens is, as we pray to God and he speaks back to us, you are in a state of consistency without ceasing. I think what you had mentioned. To pray without ceasing means to constantly pray and God will work through every part of your body. Just even your face. You ever met someone and like you see their face and you're like, something different about that guy. Something different about that girl. There's, they're tapped into something that this world you can't smoke, chew, or shoot up your arm. There's, there's something going on. You see, God will work through you as you daily take in. You daily look to Him for your power, your source of power, and our strength. Um, this is really a cool quote. I don't know who this guy is. 
I can't, I never could, bishop. So this is from some bishop, so it's got to make it real important. I love this quote. There's only two reasons, tell the person beside you, there's only two reasons why you're here. Number one, we're left on the earth to win souls, period. You see, as you read the Bible and you pray, God is able to use you into other people's lives. I used to call it the 30-day contract. Before I was in the ministry, and I'm in car shows and pro skiing all over the United States, all that stuff's going on. I would pray that every 30 days, God would send me someone that needed some truth, some daily bread that God had given me. As I prayed that prayer, pretty soon God started sending me people every two weeks. God started sending me people every week. I'd be out polishing my Kragers. How many people know what a Krager wheel is? Okay, yeah. So I'm polishing them every week for an hour. I had little forums on the front, L6015s on the back, right? The old school that you had to polish in around the lugs. Because <laughs> that mattered. I used to take the lugs off and polish them and put them back on again. Even. I'm out there polishing the wheel and all of a sudden a guy pulls up in his Nova. And he comes over and he starts talking to me because he's having a rough time. I didn't have to go find the guy. God was looking for somebody in Xenia, Ohio at that day, at that moment, that had been into his word, been into his search, that he could send to that needed direction. I challenge you to do that. Pray that, pray that God would use you once a week, once a day. Not every 30 seconds, because your, your, your driveway will be full of cars, but whatever it takes. Pray that God would use you into other people's lives. Primary reasons we're here, we're left on earth is to win souls for the Lord and to determine where you will be in heaven. If you're faithful to God in small things, he'll be faithful to you in big things. And when we're faithful to him in small things, then we have the promise that someday... When we go to heaven, we don't have to question whether we'll make it. Today, if you're here and you have a question, I don't, I don't know if I stood before God and God would say to you, why should I let you into heaven? If you don't know what to say, we're going to pray in just a minute and you can pray and you can ask God to make things right. You can tune into the right frequency of where God wants you to be. He doesn't need another me. He doesn't need another Pastor Curtis. Tell the person beside you, he doesn't need another you. <laughs> he just wants you just the way you are. You don't get any special brownie points for reading the whole Bible over a weekend. And you can do it over a weekend. When we're obedient to him, he's faithful to us in big things. And he'll take care of our problems. Of whatever we have. Whatever that need would be. Let's just stand for a minute. We're going to have a word of prayer. Did you finish all that bread already? <laughs> Who's taking him to lunch? <laughs> Alright. Come up here real quick. I'm going to have you pray and close out for us. I just want to thank you guys again today just for sharing, whether it was the bread, the radio illustration, something. Maybe take that, and then someday you'll talk to somebody, maybe this week, and they'll go, I've been praying to God, and God never answers me. I was just there last Sunday. Here's something that I kind of learned, and, we can, you, and if we can share that with other people. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us today. Uh, so we'd just like to take this opportunity to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for today, for being here with us as we spend this time together in fellowship. And we just ask that you would um, bless the rest of our time today, Lord, and uh, may everything we do bring honor and glory to you. We just uh, pray for your uh, traveling mercies for Pastor and his family as they're away, and we just pray that they're having a wonderful time today, Lord, as they're dedicating Brooklyn to you. And we just thank you for all that you do and all that you're going to do in our future. And may you just continue to um, keep us safe and guide us on the path that you have for us. 
And we just pray all these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, we just want to remind you, if you have an offering, the box is right there in the back on your way out. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for being here, and have a blessed week. You're dismissed.